All right, Nerdalls Live coming to you from Southern California here, April 5th, 2017, 1159 in the morning, just lunchtime right now. I want to do a quick video on a, I think, an amazing story. It's from Israel Today website, uh, Trump reportedly looking to host Mideast Peace Summit. What? Yeah, Donald Trump, President of the U.S., is looking to host a Middle East Peace Summit. Oh, love it. Now, I did a video several weeks ago, time really flies when you're having fun, on the Sanhedrin, the Jewish High Council, Orthodox Jews in, in uh, Jerusalem. Uh, I did a video about them asking Trump and Putin to help rebuild the third Jewish temple there in Jerusalem. Yeah, I mean, uh, look at the headlines here from last November. Sanhedrin, ask Putin and Trump to build the third temple in Jerusalem. November 10th, 2016. Again, Sanhedrin and Trump. Uh, Sanhedrin to Trump and Putin. Fulfill the Cyrus-like role in Jerusalem. Help us rebuild the, the, the temple. IsraelNationalNews.com. BreakingIsraelNews.com. Here's another one. Sanhedrin asks Putin and Trump to build the third temple in Jerusalem. Another one. Charisma News. Same thing. Sanhedrin. Take up your uh, Cyrus-like roles, right? To, to Trump and Putin. You know, which is kind of amazing, because if you think uh, uh, that Putin and Trump are lumped into the same uh, uh, group, which should be a clue that uh, to the world that Trump is anti-New World Order, and so is Putin. The reason why Putin's getting so, uh, so much hassle in the media is because Putin is anti-New World Order. <laughs> and so is Trump. Welcome to the group. Yeah. Again, Israel Today from last year. Uh, rabbis urged Trump and Putin to help rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. I could go on and on on Israel Today. Uh, again, new, new Euro uh, website here as well. Over and over and over and over. I'm telling you, this is a great time. So, to be alive. So when I look at uh, Israel Today website, uh, actually, it was from last night, April 4th, 2017. When Trump is looking to host a Middle East peace summit, hello, is this not connected? Of, sure, of, of course it is. Sure it is. Let me read from this article here. Following his meeting with the, the Egyptian president, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, yesterday, right? Uh, or on Monday, Ar Arab media is reporting that the U.S. Uh, president Trump is looking to host a Mideast peace Mideast Middle East Peace Summit as early as this summer. Oh, love it. Uh, and that has more than a few people in Israel concerned. Well, probably the Israeli government. <laughs> you got to know that the Israeli government works uh, primarily for the Vatican, right? Okay, you know, that, yeah. you know that Israeli government is New World Order? Yeah, okay, just thought I would mention that. It says, well, like most governments on the planet. Okay, while Israel and Egypt have enjoined... Uh, or enjoyed close cooperation under Al Sisi. The thing I like about the Egyptians and the Egyptian uh, walk like an Egyptian, the Egyptian president, is that the Egyptian president, uh, who used to be a general, I guess, do they can st still consider him a general? Anyways, Al Sisi, uh, he doesn't like Obama. Didn't like Obama. He he bucked Obama's plan for Egypt, which I love the guy for that. Anybody that bucks and goes against the Antichrist. Good for you. So Al CC, thumbs up, right? Yeah. So um, uh, now that he wants to work with Trump, this is great. I think it's good news. It says while Egypt and Israel have enjoyed uh, close cooperation under Al CC, the Egyptian leader reportedly told Trump that peace between Israel and the Arabs should be based on the O2 Arab Peace Initiative. Now, uh, I'll, I'll, well, I'll explain this in a moment. Israel at the time expressed appreciation for the concept of comprehensive peace as opposed to se separate peace process with the Palestinians and the rest of the Arab world, but was unable to accept many of the terms like opening the gates of the Jewish state to millions of so-called Palestine refugees. <laughs> Which well, the world is now going through uh, labor pains of uh, uh, immigrants, right, and refugees. Okay. But let me say this. Uh, I mentioned this in my program this morning, a live program. I do two live programs every day. I do three shows a day, but two live programs on Facebook Live. I just finished doing one, and I mentioned this. Listen, uh, the Jesuits, the Vatican, runs the New World Order, and they run primarily the uh, most governments on the earth, including the Israeli government. All right. And they're not going to admit that, but nevertheless, that's what's happening. And see, the Vatican doesn't want 
refugees piling into Israel. And so the policies of the Israeli government come right down the line from the Vatican. All right, so they don't, why, why, why would the Vatican do this? Well, the Vatican wants Jerusalem and, and Israel for their capital. They don't want Rome anymore. They don't want the Vatican there in Rome. No, they want Jerusalem. The end game, the end plan is to have Jerusalem as the capital of the new world order. So when you're, or when anybody's reading policies about the Middle East and why policies are accepted or rejected in the Middle East, especially with Israel and Jerusalem, uh, it's, it's uh, key to understand who's running or pushing this agenda. Uh, Israel's policies come right from the Vatican. Oh, yeah, I'm talking about the government, yeah. I'm not talking about the, I'm not talking about the I'm not talking about the Jews in Israel. I'm not talking about the Israelis. I'm not talking about the people in in Israel. I'm talking about the governments, all right, controlled by the Vatican. Okay. So the Vatican doesn't want Jerusalem or Israel uh, overrun by refugees and uh, or anything else they don't want. So they constantly set up walls and perimeters and break down your houses, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to ensure that Israel is kept safe for the New World Order. Yeah, they want the Third Temple rebuilt. The Vatican, the New World Order, the secret societies, they want the Third Temple rebuilt in order for them to take it over. Oh yeah, it's going to be Obama and Pope Francis' headquarters. Francis is his headquarters, yeah, in the near future. Will Trump help rebuild the Third Temple? Wouldn't that be cool? I would love to see it. The longer it takes for the next rapture to happen, We'll get to see things that was that all generations didn't get to see except us. They got to see it, read about it in the Bible. But we, we get to see end time prophecy events transpiring, uh, transforming the world before our very eyes. Like Obama being the Antichrist. Hello, Pope Francis being the false prophet. Nobody got to see that. We get to see that now. It's 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 a huge possibility. Uh, with putting these pieces together, that Donald Trump, president of the U.S., may help rebuild the Third Temple. That's why this is pretty interesting on this uh, article here from Israel Today, that Trump is looking to host a Middle East peace summit. Hello. I'm going to read a little bit from the other article as well, from the Sanhedrin uh, point of view, looking to Trump and Putin. Okay. So I, I just I wanted to add a little background of the negotiations and, you know, unacceptable terms, blah, blah, blah. But what's really behind that? Okay. It says, should Egypt and other Arab nations convince Trump to adopt a O2 initiative, Israel could once again find itself in a dangerous position. Well, uh, it's, again, ulterior motives, right? Okay. According to the Arab daily, Al Hayat, or Hayat, that's precisely what's happening. American sources cited by the paper said Trump was looking to U.S. hosted peace summit this summer, with Egypt joining the U.S. as one of the chief arb arbiters between Israel and the rest of the Arab world. Egypt is already officially at peace with Israel. Okay. So, very interesting. Super interesting stuff, right? Now, let me pull this article up from uh, BreakingIsraelNews.com. Connecting them together. I'm excited about this. This is exciting stuff right here. Uh, Donald Trump, Donald J. Trump is anti-New World Order. He's born again. He's undoing... Uh, everything that Obama has done in eight years. I love it. So he's, he's, he's good in my books. Yeah, Trump is amazing. I believe the last 146 years of U.S. presidents have been on the Vatican's payroll, except until Donald Trump. Ooh. So Sanhedrin asks Putin and Trump to build Third Temple in Jerusalem. Isaiah 45, uh, chapter 45, verse 1. Uh, they're quoting from the Bible, right? Thus says Hashim to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand have I holden, to subdue nations before him, and to loose the loins of kings, and to open doors before him, and that the gates may not be shut. So they're quoting from Isaiah 45, uh, chapter 45, verse 1 here, uh, equating King Cyrus uh, to Trump and Putin. And I love the fact that Putin and Trump are clumped together, because they're both good guys, no matter what the media says. When the media says someone's bad, they're usually good. <laughs> the Sanhedrin, I guess they come with the, the nascent Sanhedrin, N-A-S-C-E-N-T Sanhedrin, which is mentioned back in the time of Jesus, 2,000 years ago, is calling on Russian President Vladimir Putin and U.S. President-elect, well, back then in November, Trump, now he's tr President, Donald Trump, to join forces. The Jews asking Putin and Trump 
to join forces and fulfill their biblically mandated role by rebuilding the Jewish temple in Jerusalem. The Jews are saying that uh, Trump and Putin have a Bible mandate to help rebuild the Jewish temple. The third one. Oh, love it. Rabbi Hillel Weiss, spokesman for the Sanhedrin, contacted Breaking Israel News to announce that the election of Trump, who has promised to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, coupled with Putin's expressed desire to, to rebuild the temple, prompted the Jewish court to send a letter offering the two opportunity to act as modern-day Cyrus figures, non-Jewish kings who recognize the importance of Israel and the temple. Now, little do they know, uh, at least the Jews right now, uh, that Obama and the Pope will take over the Third Temple. Yeah, Obama is the Antichrist, and Pope Francis is the false prophet, uh, recognized in many verses in the Bible, especially Revelation 13. All right, I've done a lot of videos on that. Uh, little do the Jews know that Obama and Francis is gonna t are going to take over the temple for a new world order headquarters in the near future, after it's built. Anyways, I'm not going to read the whole article. Cyrus the Great, king of Persia in the 6th century BC, announced in the first year of his reign that he was prompted by God to make a decree that the temple in Jerusalem should be rebuilt. Uh, you can read that from Ezra chapter 1, verse 2 as well. Okay. Cyrus sent the Jews under his rule back to Israel with a considerable sum of money. Hello. And the thing is, is that, uh, can't you, I mean, Trump is a builder. He builds stuff, right? A businessman. What, what better guy to find to help rebuild the Jewish temple or build it than a U.S. president and a businessman? Hello, and Putin. Well, that'd be great. Cyrus sent the Jews back under his rule to Israel with a considerable sum of money with which to rebuild the temple. The Sanhedrin plans to call on these two world leaders, or already has, to take up the ancient Bible decree and support the Jewish people in their holy mission. Whoa! Rabbi Weiss explained that the U.S. elections have made the internal Jewish dream a very real possibility. Why didn't they ask Obama? Well, everybody knew that Obama was a, was a twit, an anti-Jewish, anti-Semite, and, and just evil. Right, okay, as well as other things. Quote, we are poised to rebuild the temple, the political conditions today in which the two most important national leaders... Wow, the Jews are saying these are the two most important national leaders. leaders. I wonder why they're getting the most flack. Oh, that's why. Everybody knows it. The political conditions today in which two most important national leaders in the world support the Jewish right to Jerusalem as their spiritual inheritance. It's historical unprecedented, Rabbi Weiss told Breaking News. Well, a side note here. The reason why the New World Order wants Jerusalem, wants uh, the temple, wants it as their capital uh, for Obama and, and the Pope and the whole New World Order is because Jesus, the Messiah, is returning not back to New York, but back to Jerusalem. Ooh, just a side note there. Okay. So very, very, very interesting. I'm not going to read the whole article. You can read it. I'll put the, the, the links here underneath this video. It's an amazing time to be alive, alive. I'm telling you. It goes into the story of some of the, uh, of the reasons why Putin wants to help rebuild the Third Temple. You know, the bottom line is Putin is... Uh, oh, that's, uh, that's my gardener outside. Putin is for Christianity. Putin is for biblical uh, uh, things to be done on the earth. Have you noticed that? That's why there's such a backlash against Putin in the last election cycle and even the media on a, on a daily basis. Everybody's saying, are you friends with Putin? How could you be friends of Putin? Actually, to be friends of Putin is a great honor. And the Jews, even in Jerusalem, the Orthodox Jews and the rabbis all understand this. They're calling them the modern day Cyruses. Wow. Love it. The Sanhedrin's letter notes that Trump's upset victory was due to his support of Jerusalem and reminds Trump of his campaign, campaign, campaign promise to move the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, which is happening right now, yeah. Effectively recognizing the city, a city as the capital of Israel. The, Ju the Jerusalem Embassy Act, passed in 95, initiated the moving of the embassy, but has been vetoed every, since every American president since. Well, every American president since 1904, uh, no, since... Uh, 1871, I was going to say 1900, no, back, back, back to the 1800s. The act of 1871 until Trump, I believe all the presidents have been part of the Vatican's, uh, on the Vatican's payroll. So no wonder that uh, they mentioned in this article that the Jerusalem Embassy Act passed in Congress in 95 to move the uh, U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem from Tel Aviv has never been done. 
has been vetoed ever uh, since every American president since ni- since uh, well ninety five. The Sanhedrin calls on Trump to withhold the veto after he takes office. It's going to be very interesting. Wow, if this happens, you know, in the next several months, uh, I'm I'm just I'm I'm just waiting for Trump to say, yeah, let's build a third temple, man. Let's build it now. Wow. And uh, maybe it'll be done by Trump's companies, <laughs> building companies, Trump Towers. <laughs> In Jerusalem, I don't think they'll put that on the third temple, but nevertheless, wouldn't that be cool? Just like King Cyrus, Cyrus, the great king of Persia, that he was prompted by God to make a decree that the temple in Jerusalem should be rebuilt. The Jews needed Cyrus to help. The Jews need Trump and Putin to help. Wow, is that amazing? And I'm looking forward to this uh, uh, peace summit. I think that uh, it's not going to be the normal mumbo-jumbo, blah-blah-blah promises and nothing being done uh, Middle East uh, uh, peace summit. I think it's going to be very interesting. It should be very unusual. And who knows, maybe Trump will answer the call and help rebuild the Third Temple. Maybe Putin will come in there as well. Wouldn't that be glorious? Why? Why? Uh, well, I know I know the Antichrist and the False Prophet are going to take over the Third Temple, but I also know that Jesus is coming back to kick their butts. All right, So it's a win-win situation. The temple is a major, the rebuilding of the third temple is a major piece of the end time puzzle. Or puzzle, puzzle pieces, yeah. So all these are signs and wonders of the soon return of the Messiah, Jesus, to the planet. Yeah, the great uh, rapture, the next great rapture is going to happen soon. The great tribulation is about to happen right after that. And the battle of Armageddon and the return of Jesus to Jerusalem. uh, And to kick the devil's butt and... uh, the Antichrist and the False Prophet into the Lake of Fire. Suckers! And the Battle of Armageddon. Oh, we got so much to look forward to. This is the time of the Great Resistance. That's why I do three shows a day. Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Live on Facebook Live with an extra uh, show that I do on YouTube to keep people reminded of all the things that we get to see and has what has happened, what is happening, what's about to happen. Yeah. Go to my website, DarylLawson.com, to check out all that information and more. I have nearly 1,500 videos on my YouTube channel and over 200 new videos on my Facebook live uh, site as well on my Facebook pages. Okay, so anyways, amazing stuff. I'm excited that Trump is looking to hold a Mideast Peace Summit. Uh, uh, It should be very unusual. And will the announcement of the Third Temple uh, be heralded from this summit? Wouldn't that be amazing? I'm telling you, it's going to be rebuilt one of these days. It's just a matter of all the details. And I think this uh, is a very high probability of Trump being involved in doing this with Putin, which I would love. I'd love to see Putin do it. Putin has a heart for Christianity. Putin has a heart for Jesus. And so, and, and, uh, so does uh, Donald J. Trump, president of the USA, and his wife, Melania. She loves Jesus, too. What about you? All right. Daryl Lawson Live signing off right now. I will be back at 2 p.m. to do my afternoon show, uh, like I do every day of the week. And you can go, my, go to my website, DarylLawson.com, to see all the information, how to get there, where to see the videos, and more. DarylLawson.com. All right, I love you. Keep up the good work. Keep praying and keep obeying. Listen, if you're not born again and spirit-filled, Jesus, wash my sins away, fill me with your Holy Spirit. You need to do that. And get in the Bible here and do it, all right? Read the Old Testament and the New Testament. But in the... Uh, uh, the Old Testament has all these uh, ceremonial laws that have been done away in Jesus, all right? So you don't have to sacrifice lambs anymore, etc., etc. So read the Old Testament in the light of the New Testament, all right? <laughs> you don't have to paint your doors with blood anymore with the Passover, but you do need to paint your heart with the blood of Jesus. Oh, so get born again, get spirit-filled, stay born again, and stay spirit-filled on a daily basis. Hear the word and do it, the scriptures. I'm telling you, watch my videos. It'll help you to... Uh, win through the battles of life. All right, Daryl Lawson, live signing up. I'll see you this afternoon, and I'll see you online. God bless you. Love you. Bye for now.